in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a sea-themed book that contains a separate mini book. I'd like to start by covering the chart that I've made to hopefully make it easier for you to understand the measurements and how the book is put together, the individual components. And if we start at the top, looking at the front cover and the back cover, the front is in two different pieces, and that is going to allow us to open the main 8x8 part. Um, and we want a gap between the two pieces so that the pieces don't bump into each other. And so if you look to the very far left, the small piece is going to be 8 by 1 inches, and then the other piece is 8 by 8. Now I chose 8 by 8 for the main front part because the paper pad I'm using is an 8 by 8 paper pad. Now if you go to the back, then that, that is going to be one solid piece, and it of course will be the same height as the front, but it's going to have to include the entire measurement of both the small piece, which is one inch, the eighth of an inch gap, and then uh, the eight inch main front piece. So it ends up being nine and an eighth by eight inches. And then if we go down below, it's gonna be the same with the pages because they're also, they're gonna be glued to the back and they're gonna be stationary because we're cutting a hole in the middle of this for another book. And so each of your pages will be nine and eighth by eight, eight inches. And then um, in order to cut the hole in the pages and to make sure that the hole is cut the same in every single page, I also made a template, which I will, I will go through and show to you. And again, that's an eight by eight, the size of the, the front cover, because that's the only part of the page you're gonna see. So you're gonna wanna center your hole in that area. And you don't wanna think about that other inch wide piece or the eighth of an inch gap. So, um, so that's going to be eight by eight pages. And then I'm gonna cut a hole in the center that is four and a half by four and a half. And that measurement comes from the fact that my book, my little mini book is four by four inches and it needs to fit in there. And I need to give it a little bit of extra space to accommodate the jump rings I'm gonna to use to put it together with and the ribbons that I'm going to use to tie it with. And the last thing is the spine. Now, I've given you the measurement of mine here, but you don't really know what it's going to be, or I suggest you don't, until you get everything put together. Because the worst thing is your book ends up thicker than you thought, your mini book ends up thicker than you thought, you put it all together, and the spine you cut is not the right size. So I wait to do that as the very last thing. Now here you can see the front cover and the back cover that I've cut. You can see the two pieces on top or for the front and then on the bottom. And I cut this out of heavy chipboard. If you don't have heavy chipboard, you can always cut thinner pieces of chipboard and glue them together. And then now here is the template. And the way I found the best to figure out how to put the um, opening, the four and a half inch opening in the center uh, is to measure from each of the sides one and three quarters inches. And if you do that and mark those and draw your lines, you will end up with this uh, area that's perfectly in the center of your big eight by eight template. And then here you can see uh, the area cut out for the template. And then you can see where I've started cutting pages. Now I also decided to cut the same hole in the front cover because I'm gonna use parts of the decorative paper that have a frame and that way I wanna be able to look inside to see what's inside the book from outside the cover. So if you just want your cover to be solid, um, you don't have to cut the hole. Otherwise, just like with the paper, I have cut a hole in my front cover. And you'll notice too, you can kind of see the paint. I like to paint all the edges. Now, of course, you could wrap your edges with paper, but it just makes it thicker and it's more work. So since I've sized this to fit the paper, I thought it was easier just to paint all the edges that you might see and then, um, and then uh, not worry about uh, wrapping it and just using the paper to the edge. Now you'll notice as we go further, the opening is, not, is going to be an oval opening. It's not gonna be square like I cut in the, in the uh, cover, but it's hard to cut an oval opening that would just be perfect to fit what I'm putting on the front. So I just went ahead and cut the same square. You're not gonna see it because there's gonna be paper on top of it and paper behind it and the, uh, the shape of those cuttings will be smaller than the hole, so you don't have to worry about there not being support or seeing the outside of the hole, or inside of the hole, I should say. I've cut out all my pages. You can use whatever kind of paper you want. I just used some junk paper that I had, 
And if you'll notice where the arrow is pointing, the green arrow, because the paper is actually the size of the entire back, then uh, you're going to see a lot more space on the left side than you will on the right. Um, and then I've also cut out a piece of the um, 12 or 8 by 8 paper, decorative paper with the hole in the middle um, to go on top of all that so that it looks pretty when you open up the, the book. Now, in terms of how many pages to cut, it just depends on the size of your mini book, which is why it, it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and make whatever you're going to put inside that hole first, whether it's a book or something else. And then that way uh, you can make sure that you cut enough pages so you don't end up cutting pages, gluing them together, starting to put things together, and then suddenly you realize it's not big enough to hold the book. Now here you can see the paper that I've chosen to use for the very front of the book that'll go on the front cover and you can see the beautiful frame. And then on the back side, I'm going to, of course, have a pretty piece of paper as well. So when you open the book on the back side of the cover, you will see a paper. But I need to uh, cut out an area on that paper so that you can get that effect of seeing all the way through to where the mini book is inside of the book. And so I simply traced that um, the outline of the of the area I've cut out of that frame onto another piece of paper, a decorative paper, and then I'll cut that out. And when the two are together with the chipboard in between that I cut the big square, that which is the, is the cover, you'll be able to see all the way through. And you'll notice that if the, um, even though they're different shapes, the, the cover's cut with a square and these are cut with ovals, the oval is much smaller than the square, so you don't have to worry about any of that showing. Before I begin assembling the book, I just wanna go over all the components. What we have here on the top is our front cover in two pieces so that we get our hinge effect. And then of course a decorative piece of paper on the front which I'm using this uh, paper with a pretty frame. And so I also wanna be able to see all the way through to where my book is gonna be. You don't have to do it that way, but that's I think that's pretty having it like that. And so now um, you wanna have something on the back side of that cover so that when you open it up, it looks pretty. And of course I've used that first page to trace the shape onto the second page in the back there so that I get the same same design, the same direction. And then um, you can see here so that it all matches. And then, of course, since I'm opening this book, I want some pretty paper on the inside that's going to go on top of all the sheets that I have. And of course, your sheets, you will use as many as you need to get the depth for the book that you're going to make. And so here I have all my different sheets of paper. Now on the back cover, even though this is going to be glued down, I want to be able to see something pretty when I don't have the book in, in this little niche. And so here's another piece of paper in the back. And then you have your back cover and of course paper on the back. Now what you wanna do next before you get any kind of assembling going is you wanna measure what you're gonna need for a spine. And obviously you would wait till you have everything before you do it because otherwise you're not going to know how um, what size to make the spine. So what you're going to do is once you get all your pieces, you're going to want to stack them up and get kind of press them and get them in line. And then you're going to come in with a ruler and measure how how deep is that. Of course, it's going to be eight inches for mine because that's the, the length of my book. And it just so happens that it's five eighths of an inch, and that's the piece of chipboard that I have cut to be the spine for the book. Now I want to start gluing the pieces together and I'll show you how I do this. I have a little trick that I think makes it easier. Now here I have the front cover and I've got the front decorative paper and the back decorative paper. And what I do is I, when I need something to, to uh, line up perfectly or as, as best as possible, what I do is I clip the paper down. I get everything lined up, clip it down so it's not going to move around, and then I glue. So I've already, I've clipped out here and here, and I've glued here, and then I've glued over here the same way. And then what I do is I have to leave this open for now because when we put the paper on that's going to cover the spine, it's going to be slipping underneath here. So I'm going to stop at this point. Uh, it's all glued together, and actually I don't even need these anymore because it should be aligned. And it's now ready for when I need to slip the other paper in here and glue that down. Now the center, I do the same trick. I kind of stack it all up and then I clip one side and then that way everything stays lined up while I go through and glue the pages. And then once these are glue, take these off and then glue the other side. 
And then for the, for the back, um, you can go ahead and uh, glue the inside page completely down. You don't care about this because you won't be able to see it. And on the back, I've done the same thing as the front. I've left this, um, this edge open because the paper's going to be fitting underneath it that goes over the edge of the spine. So, and I'll demonstrate that for you as well. Now that I've got things glued, the pieces glued together that I talked about earlier, um, I'm gonna move on to the next step, which will be to glue this uh, short piece right there. And you notice the gap between the paper and this. It's, of course, it's gonna be the same gap with the lid or the, the cover. And so we wanna keep that little gap right there, right there, that little bitty gap, because that's what's going to allow us to open this after we put the paper in. Now, the paper that's gonna go around the outside of the book and across the um, spine is I've cut this out of uh, just some uh, cardstock in my stash and it's kind of got a texture on it. I didn't want to use the decorative paper because I thought it would be too busy and I'm going to do some things to decorate the spine so I thought it would be better just to work with something solid. And so the size that I've cut it is three and five eighths inches. The five eighths is for the spine size that I measured before and the one and a half inches is so that it is big enough to slide underneath here and glue that down. It's going to wrap around and it's going to slide into the back here. And I find the easiest way to do this is to just go ahead and mark it so that you know um, how much you have to tuck underneath here so you don't end up doing it on one side and then you run out of paper to wrap it all the way through and under the paper on the other side. So I think it's easier if you just mark it. I've got the 5 eighths inch in the center here and with the 3 and 5 eighths it gives me one and a half inches on each side and this is an inch. So that gives me enough to cut to cover that part and to go underneath and give me a half an inch underneath that. You can make it bigger if you want to. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure you have enough that when you go around, when you bend this thing around your book, that you haven't left yourself short on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this in place, and then I can attach it to my book. Now you can see here where I have glued the chipboard spine piece onto the piece of paper that's going to wrap around everything. And then I've prevented it to make it easier to um, glue to the book. And I'll start by gluing that chipboard spine to all of those pages that are glued together and the edges of the back and the front covers. And then I'll tuck that uh, one piece underneath the back as I discussed earlier. And then now you see here it's ready to uh, be glued down and tucked into the front. And then once I get that all in place, then I'm going to wrap the whole book in some rubber bands just to keep that in place and to put some pressure on it while I let it dry. In terms of decorating, I'll start with the cover. On the spine, I have added a piece of Dresden along the, um, along the edge between the two pieces of the front cover. Now, you're gonna add something like that, put it on either one side of that uh, 1 8 inch gap or the other so that it doesn't interfere with you opening the book. And it started as gold, and I just uh, painted it with two different paints to make it uh, work better with the book, the color scheme of the book. And then um, on, uh, uh, if you look over to the collages, the shell collages, those uh, started out as just a piece of chipboard, which I then painted with stone paint. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll see that I like to use that. It adds a lot of texture. And then um, this, I wrapped it all the way around the this, uh, the back, this, the side of the spine, and then back around. So you do get a little, um, a little bit of the decoration on the actual spine. And then um, if we go to the actual, uh, the the frame, all the things that I did with the frame, I wanted to add a lot of things to make this more dimensional. And if you look at the green. Uh, fern looking plant uh, pieces. Those are also chipboard, which I painted green. Then I added glossy accents to the center of those where, where the, the stem is, and then sprinkled on microbeads. And then if you look uh, where the green arrows are pointing to the other two blue uh, decorative items, those are also chipboard. They're like a seaweed uh, type chipboard. And again, I painted those on this, I painted with blue. And then uh, using glossy accents, I applied micro beads to all of the uh, all of the chipboard shape. And these were an iridescent bead. So they are clear, but they have a little bit of color to them. So they will pick up the color of what's underneath it, but it will give you a variation of that color. So not only do you see 
the blue that's the color I painted the chipboard, but you also get some different shades of blues and some purples. And then I also used flowers because the paper had flowers on it, so I thought I'll just continue with that theme. But I wanted to use something that uh, was a different color than all these blues and, and light greens, so that it wasn't too tone on tone. So the papers had uh, various images that had more oranges and rust colors in it, so I went with some orange flowers. But I didn't want them to all be orange. So if you look up to the top uh, right side, there's a blue flower. All I did was I painted the flower. Paper flowers are simple to paint with just acrylic paints. And then it had a bead in the center, so I again just used acrylic paints to paint that. Then uh, lastly, uh, I had a bunch of these tiny uh, sequins. They were uh, seashell sequins. And the size of them was way too small for the scale of this project. So what I do with some with things like this sometimes, if I want to use it, is instead of using them as individual small things, I combine them to make something bigger. And so instead of having little shells, I took the little shells and make, made a big shell out of it. And all I did was uh, glue these with glossy accents in a, in a, a, a fan a type shape. So you start with one of the little sequins and glue two to those and then the next time glue three to those two and then four to those three and you just keep gluing rows until you get it as, as much as you want. And then you end up instead with one little shell you let, end up with something that looks like a bigger shell. And then um, these particular sequins were a little bit curved anyway and so as I continued to glue one row on another, then I ended up getting a very three-dimensional cupped-like looking shell, which is what a real shell would look like. On the inside of the book, I cut out uh, a lot of the flower images from, from the decorative paper, and I used those at the top corner. And underneath that is uh, some cheesecloth that's been dyed with alcohol ink. And the way I do that, I've demonstrated that a couple times in other videos. It's very simple. I just get a small container, put some alcohol ink in it and some blending solution, alcohol blending solution, and then just soak the whatever you want to dye. It could be flower, paper flowers, it could be cheesecloth, it could be other fabric, it could be ribbons. And then um, just soak it in there as long as you want. You would make the solution thinner if you wanted it lighter and, th and, and not as thin if you wanted it darker. And then just pull it out and let it dry. And I thought that the cheesecloth looked a little bit like netting. And then if you look at the bottom, there's a bunch more of those chipboard shapes. And for those, what I've done is I have, um, I have used embossing powder. And if you're not familiar on how to use embossing powder, there's a product called Versamark, which is kind of like a pad that has a sticky substance on it. And you just stamp whatever it is with that pad and coat it, you know, get a good coating of that on it. And then you sprinkle the embossing powder and then use a heat gun to melt it. You want to be careful when you melt it to go uh, slowly and, and not over melt it because it'll you'll lose the color um, or you'll cause it to burn. You can see here that I have all of my pages covered. On the front, I've used the decorative paper, and I've included a, a poem by called The Ocean by Nathaniel Hawthorne, and I thought that worked really well with the theme of the book. And then on the back side of the front page, I've done nothing, because I'm going to do that after I put my book together, because I'm going to be adding something that will act as the closure, so I'll leave that to last. And then the other pages, I've used the same uh, paper that I used uh, from my stash for the spine, and then added images from uh, the new collage sheet that I created for this project. And the images that you see on the front outside of the um, poem are also from that collage sheet or images that I cut out from the decorative paper. Now I'm going to be assembling this book using jump rings. So this is gonna be the first page, second page, third page, fourth page, fifth page, and sixth page. You're going to want even numbers if you want the last page to not end up on the back, like the, the, the picture part of it not to end up on the back. So um, uh, what I think is easiest, you're going to connect each of these, and I've, I've got them laid this way because I can't get it all in the camera this way. Um, so I'll show you kind of this way where you can see a little bit more. So you're just going to you're just going to connect each page to the next page with the jump rings, and I think two jump rings per page works the best. And so uh, what I do to make sure that the two pages that are each a combination of pages that are connected with the jump rings are, are even is I put them together where they're going to connect and then I mark 
clip this and then mark where the holes are going to be. So of course I'm going to do two holes. You want to be mindful of where you put your holes to make sure that your jumpering is going to be able to fit through this page and the next page and there's enough room. So um, you'll want to look at your, your jumpering and see what the position of that will be. And then I use this ruler, I, I've had this for years, um, that's really nice for marking holes. So I'll mark my two holes and then I'll just continue doing that with each page, connecting them, putting them together like this and marking the holes and punching them until I get to the last page. Now you can see here that I have connected, I've punched the holes and connected all of the pages except for the front page. Now the front page, as you saw earlier, it has an image on one side, the side that's gonna actually be seen in the front and the back side is blank. And now you'll see when I put the closure on why I need it to be blank. What I'm doing for the closure is I am using ribbon. And the ribbon is simply going to tie around the back of the book and come around to the side. So here you see um, the picture of the, the top, the outside of the cover, the front cover, and then behind it you see the ribbon. So I want to be able to add the ribbon and then cover the ribbon with paper and an image before I attach it to the rest of the book. It'd be very difficult to do that if it's already hooked up to the book. So you do want to make sure that you've punched your holes, so that's done, but you do, um, you do cover the back side of that front page with decorative paper, whatever you want to, after you um, actually add the, pa the uh, ribbon. Now to figure out how much ribbon you need, all you're going to do is stack that page that you haven't connected yet on top of all the others and then you want to wrap ribbon around it and make sure that you have enough because you actually need a little bit more ribbon on one, uh, one side than you do the other. And here I'm using a navy blue ribbon that I thought went well with the color scheme and I actually decided that I wanted to use two ribbons. I thought that would be really pretty so I ended up um, coming up with enough, figuring out how much ribbon I needed and then adding another piece of ribbon and on top of that and gluing them both in place. And then once you do that, then now you can finally uh, connect that front page to the jump rings through the holes that you have punched. And like I said, here you can see a picture of the back of the book. So you're not, you're taking that ribbon and wrapping it around the back of the book and, and tying it and not covering the front page. And lastly, as a closure for the entire book, I took two pieces of filigree and bent them so that I could slide them onto the uh, edge of the book. And I decided to paint them silver because I thought the silver looks better with a blue color scheme than the gold. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Down in the description area, you'll find the link to my blog post, which includes the items that you can download, the chart to make the book, and the poem, as well as information about the collage sheet and all the other supplies that I used for this project.